Welcome back, boys and girls and parents, to our last day, our last day to follow along on the journey to Bethlehem. Thank you for unwrapping um, Christmas with us during this time. And now we are on day number seven, our final day, our final present to open. So let's review real quick. Let's go back to day one um, when we first started. You remember we um, unwrapped Gabriel and then the next day Mary, then Joseph, baby Jesus, the shepherds, and the magi also known as the wise men. And so now today we are on our final day, which is box number seven. So here we go. Are you ready? Do you have any idea what this might could be in here? We've unwrapped. It feels like everything, haven't we? Huh? It's empty, but yet there's a mirror. So I'm looking at myself. Interesting, huh? So it's a mirror, right? So it's a mirror. So I wonder what that's about. So let's read what God wants for Christmas. So it says, the time is now here. Will you open God's present? For you are the reason Emmanuel was sent. The gift of your heart is what God most desires. When you give him your life, angels sing in heaven's choirs. Saying yes to God's gift is the hope of Christmas Eve. For God throws all your sins in the depths of the sea. He forgives when you're wrong and he never keeps score. You become God's own child to belong evermore. Like a butterfly emerging from a dark, tight cocoon, you are born to new life from death now immune. To be born again means your stained heart is made new. God's power is yours to know right and what's true. But God doesn't promise clear skies, always blue. Instead, he has promised to never leave you. He will never disown or from you walk away. God rules earth from heaven. He'll come back one day. There's the heart of the butterfly. A wondrous occasion was that first Christmas day. All worshipped King Jesus asleep on the hay. The shepherds and angels and wise men came near, showing how to adore this king year after year. It's astonishing that Jesus gave us all his treasure. Making your heart his home brings you riches beyond measure. In December, we honor God's best work of art. What God wants each Christmas is all of your heart. And so that is what God wants for Christmas. God does want something for Christmas, boys and girls. He wants you and he wants me. When I was eight years old, I accepted Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. I will never forget that day when my dad took me into my room and talked to me. I had done something wrong um, that was not pleasing to God. It was a sin. And I did not say something that was very, very nice to someone. And it was a sin. And my dad took me into my room and told me about Jesus dying for my sins and that I could do nothing to save myself from my sin. Only Jesus could come in and take my sin away because Jesus is perfect, right? We've talked about that, that only Jesus is perfect and can, and can replace um, the sin, take out the sin in our heart. Only God can do that. And so I remember that day giving my heart, giving my life to Jesus. Now, one thing about it, though, um, is that it wasn't like just because I made that decision that all of a sudden now 
my life was great and I never had any more problems. That is not the way life is, is it, boys and girls? That we know we live in a hard, tough world and it's full of sin. But that's why we need Jesus. We need him to come in to our lives and to save us um, from our sins. And so the Bible says that if we will confess our sins to God, that he will come in and wipe it clean. He will take away the sin and we will be pure and white before him. And we might have to do that every day, right? And so that's why we need the story. That's why we need the gospel every day in our lives. I am so thankful for Jesus because with Jesus, I have everything. Whether I'm having a bad day or I'm going through a hard time or I have a friend or a family member going through a hard time, I can know and believe that Jesus is with me, that he loves me, that he cares for me, that he will never leave me or forsake me and that he has good plans for me. And I want to say that to you, that God already knows what you're going to do and you can have a relationship with him. That's what Christmas is all about. It's it's not about the presents. It's not about the decorations. Although we know we can have fun with that, right? It's so much fun to celebrate Christmas in those kind of ways. But the real reason we celebrate Christmas is because Jesus came to this earth as a little baby. And he grew up and he became the savior of the world. He died on the cross for you and for me so that we could live forever with him. We need Jesus to save us. And I hope if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and savior, and you're ready to do that, that you would take that step and obey. If God has put that in your heart and you know it's time and you know you're supposed to, um, Maybe talk to someone, talk to your parents, talk to your Sunday school teacher, talk to a friend that you trust. If you know that God is telling you to do that, I want to encourage you to do that. We will rejoice and be so excited that you come to Jesus because he wants you this Christmas. If you have any other questions, please come talk to me. I would love to talk to you more about the story of Christmas. So thank you so much, boys and girls and parents, for joining us during this season, during this seven-part series of Unwrapping Christmas. I hope that you have learned something, that you've grown closer to God. And if you need to make that decision, I hope you will do that today. So right after this, I hope you will tell someone and then you can become a Christian. Let us know if there's anything we can do. We are praying for you. We love you. And we hope you have a Merry Christmas.